Hi, it's Sue and welcome to my channel. If you're a new subscriber, welcome and thank you for joining me. And if you're um, a sub subscriber for a little while now, welcome back. Um, I hope you all find some inspiration in what I'm going to do today. Now today, um, I've been doing a little bit of tidying up and I came across some a project that I'd done a little while ago um, and it was these altered tea bags I guess or painted tea bags using the gorgeous girl stamps uh, from Santoro um, and I did remember that I actually have bought more not many I've only bought three more um, but I thought you know what I I'm going to use those new ones and make some more because they really are quite cute. Um, they've been sitting in a coffee cup um, on one of my side tables for quite some time now. So this is this one and this one is Little Violet and I did make the little tags to go with them. There's nothing on the back, they're plain on the back and inside is some cotton wool just to get puff them up a little bit. So that was that one. This is pulling on, oops, pulling on your heartstrings and she's got little hearts hanging off there. Very cute. I really do love these stamps. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> and this one is Robin Wood. That I think might be a bit of a play on, oh sorry, it's Poppy Wood. Poppy Wood, yeah. So very, very cute. So what I thought, I have a whole stack of tea bags um, that I've collected because I am a quite a big tea drinker so I have collected lots of them and at some point I do plan on doing a like a tea ephemera or a tea journal so I have been collecting all the different teas that I drink all the tea bags and boxes and things like that so I do have quite a few tea bags um, so basically all you need is a used tea bag let them dry out thoroughly um, now this one's a more modern one because you can see it's actually got string. The older ones had little staples in them and all you need to do is clean them out. Now uh, I've just realized I don't have my blade here. Where is it? Hmm. I just had it. There it is. Okay so just going to get rid of the the string. Okay and you just simply open it up. You don't need to open it all up. Just sort of scrunch up the tea leaves so they're not all dry and clustered and just tip them out. And I tip them on my pot plants. Okay, and of course it does make a mess no matter what you try and do. All right, so I'll just clean this up. All right, um, I don't want that in the paint, so I'll just get rid of that, okay. The next step is I use um, a piece of card or a piece of paper and I just slot it in inside the tea bag like so and all this does is just protect the um, the other side I guess so the paint doesn't go all the way through. Decide which side you're going to do the painting on. Um, but I'm just going to fold it where the fold of the tea bag was so that I know what area I'm working on. And one side's usually longer than the other, I've noticed. So, actually, I think it might go that Oh, no, it goes that way. Uh, thinking, if you look at the folds, you can work out which is the, the bigger side. So that obviously folds there. That folds there. So I guess it doesn't really matter. Maybe this one's the bigger one. All right, so we might just pop the card a little bit further down. There we go. Okay, and you'll find tea still drops out no matter what you do. Okay, now I'm going to bring you in a bit closer again because you're not going to be able to see and hopefully my head won't be in the screen too much as I look down because they are small. Now, what I have got, um, I have got, and I'll take them out. I should have done this before, I didn't think. This one here, this one, got this little girl here, and she is, uh, it does say somewhere on the packet, sugar and spice. So 
um, you can see that she's she's sort of pink. So I have chosen this um, English rose paint. So I'll be using that for her. Now the other ones I've got, back down again because it's very difficult to see. Okay, this one is this little girl here. And she is New Heights. As you can see, she's got the books there. And that one um, I did choose. I thought I'd go actually with yellow. Um, this is, I think, banana. Oh, no, it's daffodil yellow. Yeah, I thought I don't often use yellow, so I thought I'd use yellow for her as the base color. Um, there's this one here, which ironically is yellow. <laughs> and she is the little friend. And a little friend they're referring to, I've just realized, if you look closely down here, is the little mouse in the cup. So for the her, I've decided to just use these two colors here. And for the face, face we have the apricot um, Dina Wakeley paint. All right, so the first thing to do is pick the one you're going to work with. Uh, we do need a stamp block. Okay, now I do have stays on ink because um, you will be painting and you don't want the ink to run. So now just before I put ink on I'm going to work out where what part of her needs to be where. I think there because they fold in the bottom was about there so okay some of them I found are a bit bigger I mean this design is a lot bigger than this one so with this one you actually see more of the girl but oh well <laughs> all right make sure there's plenty of ink no second chances. Well, unless you use a different tea bag, of course. Okay. Okay, crossing fingers here. Okay, it's very, it's not too dark actually, but I should be able to see where I'm working. We primarily the pink, and I do have some smaller brushes. And I do keep this little one here in front of me as a bit of a reference because there is, I've actually really, now that I'm looking at it, there is some black in there as well. So uh, once I've painted this and it's drying, I will go and get the black paint. Now I don't worry too much about the shading yet because, um, look, they're quite small. So you tend not to see a lot of the shading on the tea bags anyway. But you can add that a little bit later. Okay, now I probably will fast forward this bit because um, it will take some time. actually uh, stamp the other ones and do the faces on the other ones as well. Okay, I'm just going to slip in some paper. And the darkness of the different tea bags is simply because um, it's just different tea. The um, Morning Tea, uh, which is one of the brands we have here, Twinings, they also have an English breakfast. Um, they tend to be a little bit darker, I've noticed. Okay, this one does not want to go in. There we go. Okay, so i um, just thinking the other end might be better for this one. So I'll just push it right up there. 
be enough. Okay, now let's see if I can do a better job with these ones. Now, as I said, this one's a little bit smaller, this design, so more of the girl will be seen. Okay. Okay, not too bad. There. And the next one. So just make some room. So again, I'll have the little cards just above me for reference. And we're just doing the face of each of the girls. I'm not going to paint all three on camera because it will take too long. Um, it's not a quick process really even though they're tiny because there's quite a bit of detail so it does take a little bit of time and concentration. So I will try just to do the one and then I will do the others and show you how they turned out. Now I'm just going over it a second time because it's a bit faint. Alright, so we'll let those dry. now. This one here, I'm looking at the pink. Now she's got a pink collar. Of course it is a lot easier if your stamping's a lot better, but um, you can do it. It just requires a bit more effort. And remember you will lose the lines from the stamp. But you can go in with a black fine liner and add them later if you need to or you want to. With this one, because it's black, you could do the whole dress pink, I guess, and then go over the um, just the lines in black, I guess, if you wanted as well. I must admit I'd love to be able to do the shading that, that they do on them. Whoever does the um, the shading certainly does a great job. Now, I'm just wondering if you can actually see much. Oops, excuse me, I'll just see if I can get the light. Mm, doesn't seem very light today. is not to get too much paint on your brush I think when you're trying to do fine things like this. As I said a fine brush is really is necessary. You need a fine brush. And look if you mess up don't stress too much. You can always sort of fix it as you go along. It's, it is difficult painting on a, a surface that's porous and that it's um, not exactly smooth either. Um, it's a little rough. It's got a few little folds and things in there that make it a little tricky too. So I guess the thing is not to be too harsh on yourself if you do mess up. And look what's the worst that you make another one. You know realistically. We don't really have her legs. What we do have is some little bows in her hair. I'll give that a few minutes to dry and I will be back. Okay and I've just remembered I should have turned the camera on. Um, I am actually just painting the hair now and it's just um, black paint. It's a um, just all-purpose acrylic jet black that I picked up from somewhere so I'm just painting the hair now and it's I'm just using straight black for the moment um, 
we'll pop some shading and things in towards the end as we finish I think don't want to make it too complicated but as I said all the fine detail will do um, probably with a gel pen although I do think that when I did the original ones I think I did a lot of the detail with a very fine brush but I think a gel pen will probably do the job just the same they really are. I do like the um, Santoro stuff. It's just a little expensive to get to Australia if you can't find it on a website in Australia. I know Auntie Vera's Scrap and Craft does have some of the Santoro stuff um, because I did use uh, the lace for my design team projects but um, and I did notice there are some other ones there, some of the stamps, some of these little stamps. Um, and some of the larger stamps too, but I haven't sort of haven't got those ones yet. Just trying to work out where that hair. I'm just trying to work out here where this hair goes, because it's a sort of a bit in the background that's grey. But I'm thinking I might make that black. I do have to do the parts of the dress. Okay, we might just let that dry and I will be back. Alright, I'm going to start the black section of this one. Now there are white dots which I'm not too fussed about because I'm pretty sure we'll be able to put those on with some paint or with a gel pen later. Now just thinking maybe a finer brush still. I was thinking as I was painting the other ones that um, I really did choose the most difficult one to paint on camera. <laughs> I thought oh gee I could have picked an easier one than this one. Oh well. <laughs> I'm up for the challenge. And look as long as you've got a fine brush and a reasonably steady hand it's not that difficult and look you can always fix up and touch up as I said but I think the key or part of the key is to make sure your stamping is very clear to start with that helps certainly helps now there's a few bits there I'm not sure if you can see them I might just bring it up a little bit there's a few bits up that top area where the bow is that um, not sure what colours they are. Might have to come back and work something out there. And it certainly helps when you've got the, um, I think the outlines done later, I think will make it look better as well. Not a good idea to do this when you're in a hurry either, I think. Give yourself time. Um, and let the layers dry in between. I probably haven't really let enough time in between to dry them but of course you know I did want to get the video done so <laughs> now I'm actually meeting my mother for lunch for her birthday so that will be nice so I am conscious of the time there is a little petticoat under there but we'll worry about that at the end this is where you just go back and just touch up little bits that you don't think uh, uh, could or could be better, I guess. But remember, it can be cleaned up with a gel pen. I'll leave this to dry properly now. So I'll come back when that's totally dry, I think. Sometimes it's best to do, well, it is always best to let it dry before you do the next layer. Alright, I will be back. Okay, now I'm going to try to go in with the gel pen to do some of the detail. So I'm looking at the little dots. Now on there, there they could be white or they could be pink. So I'm actually going with white. She's lost her sleeve there. Okay, that's not too bad. I think I'll do the rest in the gel pen. <coughs> okay. Uh, now there is a little bit of a white hem there. Let's see if we can do that in the gel pen. Probably could 
could do with a finer gel pen actually. This one's, it says fine, but it's not as fine as some of the ones I've had. Okay, it's not too bad. Now I've got to fix up some of this dress. Possibly in hindsight it would have been better to do all the pink as a, a base coat and then come along and um, do the black over the top, I think. Okay, not that great, but not too bad. Not too bad. Now I need the white for the sleeves. Whoops, there we go. I think the important thing is just to give it a go. Now I'm going to try and get a little of the colour into the face here. Look, they're not perfect. Um, the detail's not quite as good as the um, original, but um, look, to be completely honest, if you could do that, you're doing very well with paint, I think. So it's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to have to let that dry. Now I will show you the other ones. I haven't quite finished them yet. Um, but that's this one, not quite finished, and this one as well. Okay, but I'm going to have to let them dry uh, before I can do much else to them, I think. So we'll just pause there for a moment. Okay, <clears throat> they're well and truly dry now. So what you do now is, once you're happy with all the painting and the detail work, you simply pull out the paper. Now you may find it's a little bit stuck, so if you're very careful, you can actually just unstick it from the paper. Just be really, really careful. Just do it gently. If you need to use something else, just be really careful. I find fingers is probably the best because you can do it gently and you feel what you're doing. It does come away, you've just got to be really, really careful. You could, I, I suppose, use, um, a, uh, what's it called, um, like a baking paper or something like that. That would, I guess, maybe stop the sticking so much. Of course, ironically, this is the most difficult one I've had. Look, if it gets too difficult that way, you can always open this here. <clears throat> now, a little bit of damage there, but it's not too bad. Um, okay, so what you need to do is grab some cotton wool, and you don't really need much. You don't even really need a ball, one ball, just a small amount will do. And you pop that in the inside like so. Now, I'm going to have to reseal this. You could fold it over, but that's a bit fiddly, so I'm just going to use a bit of craft glue. We need to fold it, so we're folding it in half to find those fold lines again. You should be able to see the fold lines still. Just make sure that the cotton isn't too far down. <clears throat> so it's basically a concertina pattern at the bottom, but you should be able to follow the, the way the um, tea bag is. And then it's a matter of folding down the little corners. And in this case, folding just over the top. Or you can fold under, it really doesn't matter. Now, I would suggest a tiny bit of glue there. And I'm going to put just a little bit on the back because uh, the string can go there. And then you're stapling from the front, hopefully through the string like so and then now to make the other piece just cut a small piece like so it's probably about two centimeters by one two three maybe six centimeters and you just simply glue it together now I did print out um, just some little tags this one says sugar and spice and that's like so and we turn it over Now 
This one says Gorgeous Girls. Now I'm just going to trim a little bit off the corners so it's sort of more like that tea bag tag shape. Just stress around the edges, a little bit over the actual whiteness of the label. And now the string. Again, a little bit of glue to hold it in place. And I stick it onto the side where it says Gorgeous Girls that's what I'd consider the back and as another staple from the front okay so we have that and that's not very well stuck just let me pop some more glue on that that's better okay so we have that and the back and we have the tea bag, and we have from the back. All right, so this is the one of them. So that's sugar and spice. And we have this one, and she is the one that's the little friend. And we have this one being New Heights. Okay. And if we add those to the other ones. We have a collection of six. So there we go. And I will pop those back in my cup for um, display. I will put some photos of the close-up ones um, at the end of the video and I will put the link to the original video that I did these ones. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you give it a try. If you don't have the Gorgeous Girl stamps, um, you could of course use any other small image that you have, um, cats or something like that maybe, to make your own set of um, decorative tea bags. Alright, thank you very much once again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.